that night, absorbed in my own little world. Soon after entering, I made my way to the line. My eyes danced to the crescent moon-shaped scar adorning the young clerk's neck. With the gentleman in front of me, he spoke of camouflage and machine guns. Of earlier times when he only saw his family through the lens of a webcam. When he first learned what it meant to be a man, and when he first realized what true loss really felt like. It's my turn. I step forward and stare directly into his eyes, and I wonder how he's ended up here. His face doesn't give away much. He's painted on a cordial smile, and the air between us seeps with the remnants of small talk. But I can't help wondering. I wonder if he knows he's more than he's been told, more than he's settled for. He's more than the orders he was commanded to obey, more than the lines he was expected to cross, and he's more than the monster he had to become to survive. But I can't help but wonder how he's ended up here. Overseas, he's ranked, but now that he's home on friendly soil, he's tossed into department store jobs and temporary positions. I can only hope he's better off than some of his friends tossed and piled into psychiatrist's offices that smell like marmalade. <laughs> but I wonder, I wonder what memories might decide to plague his dreams while trying to figure out which pill alleviates which painful recollection, which memory might decide to haunt him, and which friend's life will flash before his eyes as he tries to fall asleep, norepinephrine firing through his brain like the gunshots he was commanded to deliver. The United States government is so quick to draft, but it hasn't learned how to welcome home. Woo! They hide their veterans in the corners of psych wars, allow them to get lost in the depths of their own mind, and hope the PTSD eats away whatever is left. These men fight for countries who don't know what to do with them afterwards. What they both need to learn is that there is life after war. Woo!